Okay, so last class, uh, we worked on this piece and we are uh, kind of blocking it out right now. And the next step for us after this is to start uh, finalizing some of these, uh, these details and, and putting some more information in here and getting some good, good stuff. So let us uh let's continue so last class you know we kind of ended with making this uh this little shape right here and we used our spline draw to draw on this edit poly uh you know modifier and you know we just kind of drew a spline but there's some issues that happen with the spline uh whenever you create them that it's either uh, an advantage or a disadvantage based on how you kind of handle that situation. So uh, what we're trying to recreate is these tribal markings that are located right on uh, on this arrow here. So let me let's let's jump into a, a bigger screen so you guys can see As usual. We're going to turn on that no board. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive in a little bit. Okay, take a sip of my tea. And uh, so I'm just gonna, if I hit, uh, select this guy in Alt X, just, you just need to be thicker. I think is what it is too. So I'm gonna select these guys. I just need to do a little more work on here to get it a little bit uh, better. So uh, what you guys might not have seen that I did a little bit was uh, I went ahead and I made sure all the verts were welded. So one thing you wanna make sure is, is that uh, all the verts are welded. And the way to know if you've got split edges is if I break this, Right, you'll see a yellow, uh, a yellow mark, or a yellow, and that usually means those two are separate. So you're gonna want to select where wherever those two are, and then just uh, weld those. And if it's not welding, you might need to increase the threshold, which is to the right of this, uh, to the right of this right here. So you might want to increase the threshold, and then hit the weld button. So the the, the you know, so if I increase this threshold pretty far it, it'll be able to weld those right so uh, you guys see that at one right so you just if it's not welding you just you might want to increase that uh, threshold so that's what I'm making sure that I don't have any open faces because it's gonna give you some weird uh, weird issues so the next thing I wanted to address is if you look at my uh, the shape that it gives me it's smooth but it's not like all the way smooth so what I want to do you know that's a weird way to say it. it's just it's still got some jagged edges just because of the fact that I had to draw it so like it's still got some weird funky you know kinks in the shape so you know I want to kind of fix some of that and, and normalize that and I've showed you guys how to do this but I use this this modifier called normalize spline and at its base level uh, it doesn't do a very good job, but I, what I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit show knots right there, and then I'm going to uh, change it to not count, right? And what I'm trying to do is I'm tr as you can you can see now that it went from something that you can see how these are, these are kind of jagged a little bit, and they have these weird uh, you know distortions in the shape to when we normalize it, right? It kind of smooths out that uh, that curve, those transitions for it. And that's really what we want with this guy. So that's what I'm trying to do now is just make sure that I've got nice smooth transition and I'm using it, you know, I'm changing it to show me the knot count. And you guys can't see that right now because I've got it on uh, set on that. So let me turn off turbo smooth and then go into normalized spline. So if if I'm just using the, the segment length, that's what I get, but I'm gonna change it to not count. And another thing I wanna do is I wanna make it a, a simple, uh, simple interpolation. And what that kinda does is it kinda evens everything out, right? 
So it's going to kind of even everything out for us. All right, you guys can see that. So what it's doing is it's saying at the max count, max a thousand, the and this is the not count that we're giving it. So sixty-five. So the maximum that it's ever gonna go to is a thousand, and we're just kind of cranking it up from there in between. All right, and I want them to be kind of evened out. So as you can see, these guys might need to be separated so that they get their own normalized spline. All right, so. Let me show you. If you normalize spline, maybe I want to reduce it. Right, just give it enough to where it is smooth. Right, so without, with, right. So we're just kind of cleaning up this uh, this spline a little bit. So I'm just gonna throw an editable spline on top of that. All right, let's increase this. All right, as you guys can see, look at this right, this guy right here. It's gonna kind of round that out for us. So now, I'm going to actually take this guy. So what I want to do is actually, I want to go back into this stack. And I want to detach these that are, they're just getting a little too, uh, they're getting too, too scrunched or too, you know, they're getting too close together when it comes to those verts. So I just kind of want to clean that up a little bit. I want to make sure that uh, they all have kind of an even spaced geometry around them. As you can see, like, and, and what I'm trying to say is like, look, like if you look right here, right, you can see how close those are bunched together and these are not. So this is getting more geometry than these, and I kind of want to keep them at a similar geometry uh, count, just because uh, it's gonna be it's gonna make our lives a lot easier in the future, and it's gonna be a lot cleaner. So I'm gonna remove these guys that have kind of that really dense geo. Just detach those, and these leave them the same. So it's gonna scroll down here, detach, okay, like that. And now we can even select uh, this spline. Oops. Then copy that normalized spline. And I can throw it on here. But now all I want to do is just change the parameters down a little bit so that I don't have as many of those. You guys can see what I'm talking about, right? So now we've got two of them with two separate ones. And I can kind of augment how I'm I'm having my my shapes uh, determine that all right so now if I enable a viewport Making sure let's normalize the spline. Alright. So now we can just convert them to editable splines after we get something decent. So I'm just gonna convert this guy to an editable spline like so. And now I'm gonna attach, reattach this guy back since they have a kind of a similar So now if we throw an edit poly modifier on this guy, all right, 
think that's something that we can just all we need to do is just a little bit of cleanup. We don't even have to do that. We can just do a turbo smooth. Just throw one turbo smooth on and we've got something something decent. So here we might want to clean this guy up right here. No, we might we're gonna want to clean this guy up. So the way to do that you can just select this guy like so this edge right here. like those we can ring it right click it and then collapse all right do the same here ring and then we can just collapse those all right so now we're kind of relieving a lot of a lot of that pinched area in the mesh so now two Just kind of cleaning it up. All right. Scale this guy up just a little bit. Rotate it a little bit. Okay. Right. So, you know, it's just a matter of cleaning some of this stuff up and making sure that, you know, We've got got the right thing. I'm gonna move, start moving some of these guys aside a little bit, just giving them a little bit of room to breathe. I might also want to make them thicker. Let's cut that. Let's make them a little thicker. But also, I have the option of using soft selection here as well, right? So if I have, uh, I can select this guy and use my edge distance, increase my edge distance there, right? Just increase it and then use edge distance to, uh, So you still have that ability. You can pinch it so it has. Let's do the fall off. Increase the distance. So, right. You still have some some monicum of control. Right. So that's if you're using soft selection. So all these tools are still available to you. You haven't missed. You know, you're not losing anything. And that's why it's always it's always just easier and a little better to work small than big because once you have so many control points like this, it becomes very hard to manage the entire shape. And that's why I always try to teach you guys to work from small to big. So, you know, just you know, keep it simple first, and then the the you know the bigger it gets, the more you can start to add more geometry. The further along the line you get, the the more geo you can add to this guy. So. Just uh, just kind of adding uh some more of this stuff. So let's actually let's hit three. I'm gonna move this guy over. This guy over a little bit too.
these guys a little bit over, so I'm going to use my soft selection. And then edge distance. Let's increase that. Increase the distance. There's no ignore back facing here. I don't know why the pinch. Yeah, so it's. Let me move this bubble. There you go, pinch. Increase. Oops, increase the fall off. So I'm just kind of still using some of the tools that I have in my belt to reshape this guy. Right. So now we can throw an edit edit poly on this guy, and you know this guy's still still kind of uh, hefty geometry wise. So what you can do to reduce some of this geometry is you can go into your modeling tab. Hit uh, dot ring here. Just dot ring it. I'm gonna deselect these, these guys. Deselect these guys, and then loop. So what that's doing is it's, it's selected every other one. So now if I hit Control and Backspace, right, you can see that it cleans it up a little bit. You know, for us, just like that. I'm just cleaning up a little bit and sometimes less is just more. Dot ring, loop, loop. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just split the edges where I want it to do that. Select this guy, dot ring, right, loop, control backspace. Maybe do it one more time. Dot ring, deselect that guy, deselect that guy, loop it again, boom, control backspace, right? I can make it, you know, relatively, relatively low. Okay. Select that guy. Oops. Select this guy. Split those. All right. Dot ring. Loop. I have it set up to a hotkey, but you can just loop it. Control backspace. Boom. Just trying to clean up. You know what I'm saying? Boom, right there, right there, split those. And I'm gonna do a general weld at the end, so. Uh, so now if I do a dot ring, I don't have to worry about that last one. Remove this, loop, control backspace, do that again. Dot ring, then Loop. Control backspace. All right, that's just much cleaner in general. So uh, let's do that. Yeah, I think I'll break it off right here. I'll split them right here and then just dot ring loop control backspace select this guy dot ring loop all right I can take it down pretty low let's do the same here 
we'll actually we'll break it right here because this is already pretty low right you can see like it's not that it's not as high as boom you know it's not as high as that so that's what i'm looking at whenever i'm trying to figure out all right where's the where's all this extra geometry coming from so dot ring yeah, let's all select that all select that so let's loop that control backspace and just do it again all right a lot of this is repetition and what i would eventually do is you know uh just make a hotkey for it i thought yeah just make it a hotkey or something so like me i have my loop to one key my ring is on all you know to my right keypad if you can see that and then my loop is um so loop is down and then right is ring and then i just do that over and over if i need to to get you know to get that so it's like a quick few quick operations instead of something that takes forever to do so so for this one i might still i might split it here and then just come back and manually clean up some of those areas so right click so I've got that guy right split it select this guy once again dot ring and loop this bad boy um so you guys are getting the the hang of this in the sense of you know it's just repetition so uh dot ring boom boom and then loop right remember how low do you you know you got to think about how low do you want to take this guy Actually, let's do it where this this corner is we're going to split these split right and i can right click and do it here or come over here so uh keep that in mind so now once again dot ring move this guy loop control backspace right you guys can see this is much much cleaner than what we had it's much uh, I mean, this is what i mean by manually coming back so i'm just going to manually come back and just clean up some of this stuff here it's making sure that my geometry i might even add one here all right i might add one there i just you know i don't want too many long triangles i want it to be a little more squared off you know, so, um, and the lower the geometry count is, the the easier it is for you to manage a lot of these. So, you've got a cleaned up uh, little piece of poly here, and if we want, we can throw a symmetry modifier on this bad boy. Let's hit S on your keyboard, bringing up the symmetry. It's not on the one it's on the y and we're gonna flip it around hit one on the keyboard and then we're just gonna bring these guys like that Amen. all right so we you know we're making this cool runic kind of detail right Is our, yeah, it's good. That's fine. So now if I hit turn on the turn on the turbo smooth. Alright, we're getting this cool rune detail. And where you see these hard edges, that's where the the, the stuff is still split. So now we're just gonna wanna go in, throw an edit poly on this bad boy, maybe select all of them, right click, weld. Right, and that's good to go. All right, so you guys can see we've got some pretty cool detail here made for our room piece, and then we're you know we're gonna want to make some of this rope that's gonna be uh, covering from uh, the the arrow and then you know fastening it to uh, to our little piece here but 
before we go there, we want to kind of create some of this extra detail and maybe add a little more detail to our uh, our blade here. So let's go into uh, detailing out some of these pieces. So we've spent some time on this this kind of blocky area over here, and we have gotten pretty far. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to collapse everything because I've got everything saved previously. So I'm just going to alt one for me is my swift loop right as you guys can see but if you want to make a more precise uh cut so you can just select that guy ring it right click it and then connect and it's going to select you know it's just going to connect or all of those rings together make giving you an extra edge right down the middle if you you can slide it or pinch it to the right or left or if you got two you can pinch it you can slide it right or left but if we put it on zero it's just going to put it dead center so you're going to hit the check mark to make sure that your uh, your selection has been input into uh, the system then you can split them so like this guy I'm just going to delete uh, that guy that guy on the other side so uh, now what I want to do is just select our our center uh, our polys right here and if I maybe maybe go select it by angle let's do one it does a better job but it's a quick way to select a lot of things at once so I'm just gonna now select all these guys and so maybe deselect some of this area and because uh, it's got this I think it's got this bevel in there or this extrusion so that's what I'm trying to, uh, to kind of achieve some of this maybe a little bit of that and then uh, let's hit X I'm gonna do regularize loop and that's gonna make me a, uh, a perfect circle in there Just gonna... Wait, do I have more than that selected oh I do I do I do I do, I do. Okay, so that's the problem right there Okay, so just have something like that selected, and then right click X. I'm just going to regularize the loop, like so. And then I'm just going to scale it down. Maybe I did too much. I'm going to remove these guys from the equation. Right click of X regularize all right that should give me a better a better situation so now I can just uh, I'm just gonna rotate this guy just a little bit still not it's still deforming that geo a little too much for my liking so I'm just gonna inset this guy a little bit and then X X regularize. Okay, now I've got something. Right. Let's try this again. Inset this guy like so, and then X. Okay, okay. 
gonna rotate it a little bit just so the Here, I just need to clean this up a little bit. Just got my loop here, and I just need to oops, just go into my geo here. I'm gonna hide this stuff so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm about to do. So, as you guys can see, I've got my loop here, but I want to clean this up a little bit more. So, what I want to do is now I'm just gonna so like that, I've deleted the other side. So now what I'm doing is I'm just, you know, selecting these guys and I'm just gonna move them around to give my, uh, my newly created, my newly created a uh, circle here, some breathing room for it. All right, so now it's gonna have some space to breathe and it's not going to be, uh, you know, kind of in the way of anything else. I'm just, once again, and this is, you know, this is the idea is, you know, you just got to move polys around and don't be scared to kind of mess stuff up because trust me, everybody does it. Everybody does it. So uh, what I can do here is if this, this is starting to, it's, it's getting some weird pinching uh, going on. So I can probably relax this. Let me see what happens if I relax this. And for me, I'm never scared to like mess something, you know, especially with little projects like this, I you know. I enjoy doing stuff like this. This is, see like that's what happens when I relax it. No, I don't want that. What I will do though is select those, deselect these. All right, and the only way I know how to do this stuff is just by messing up a lot of stuff. Like just messing up a bunch of stuff and doing it wrong for a long time and trial and error, you know. And if you're not trial and erroring, you know, you're not getting in that phase of stuff like, you know, you're you're doing yourself a disservice because, you know, if you you're not going to learn what you don't know if you're not messing around with stuff. So I just encourage you guys just to, you know, mess around, mess stuff up. It's OK. It's all good. Like for me, if I mess this up, I don't care. All right. So that worked. So you guys can see like. What happened was I just relaxed these because it was giving me this weird, you see this weird little, you know, flash of nonsense right there. I didn't like that. So I just go in here, select those, relax, relaxed those verts together and everything is good to go now. All right. And I can select everything, clear all, do an auto smooth and you won't even be able to tell. Right. So that's the idea. You just, you you know. But to understand how this geometry stuff works, well, you need to you need to practice it. If you don't practice it, you're not going to get good at it. So, yeah. so now I'm just going to uh, now I can select my newly formed mesh. I can even throw. Let's do. Just boop. Select that, bevel that in a little bit. I want to scale that out a little bit more. All right, just looking at this shape, you see there's this little little divide in there. So that's you know. That's part of this geo is like trying to create the avenue for that uh, that detail to occur, and that's what you're doing whenever you're moving this stuff around. You're trying to match uh, that silhouette. You're trying to match that shape. What's going on in there? 
All right. And it takes a lot of patience and it takes some time, you know, and it's not something that just happens. You have to be deliberate about it. And, you know, the only way you're going to get there is, like I said before, practice, 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 you know. And that's why it's one of those classes that if you don't have the time to put into it, it's not going to be worth it for you. You know, you've got to have time to actually try some of this stuff out and, and mess stuff up and fix stuff and, you know, understand geometry for yourself. So because sometimes it's something that I can show you. Sometimes it's one of those things that, you know, until you figure it out your way, you're never going to understand it because all this stuff I'm doing, yes, you can do it this way, but you can easily also do it by sculpting, right? That's another avenue for making this stuff, right? So uh, what you'll learn in the industry is nobody cares how you do stuff. As long as you deliver the product on time, you deliver the product that they ask you to deliver, nobody cares and everybody just wants to get the work done and get it out of the way. So uh, right here, I've got some kind of protruding geo. So if I want to make sure that it's flat, right? Uh, one way I can make sure of that is I can find uh, I can find a geometry that is flat or a, a vertex that is flat geometry. I can find a vertex that is flat, and then just on the z axis, right? Copy the z and then paste it here. Oops. Z. Snap it there. Oh, let's do view. Right. So I'm just snapping it to those verts and using them as like a reference point. So making sure. All right, and you get you guys can see right here. I've got like a starfish. You see, this is this is what you would consider a high valence point. This is where you can see that I've got this kind of starfish. So if I, you know, if I was being super cautious, I would try to work it away to somewhere where you can't see it. So like I would try to maybe move it further down here to where the ropes would cover it or something like that. You know. Uh, that's that's one of the ways that you would go about kind of mitigating things like that. So just giving you guys a little more insight as to how some of this stuff works. All right, so uh, yeah, I think I've got I've got a pretty good handle on this mesh right here. So we've got ten more minutes. Let me let me clean up some of this stuff here. I'm going to hit Alt and 1, and uh, just going to add a little bit right here, and then right there. And then I can inset this guy again. If I want Shift, Drag to kind of inset it a little bit, maybe bevel it just so it captures the light a little bit better. All right, if I hit Alt-1, I'm turning on my Swift Loop. I can throw some more edges in there. I can throw one right there. Uh, okay.
right now it's not flattening this uh, this edge, so I might want to throw, you know, throw some more edge edge loops right there. So now see that it flattened that edge for me. So if I unhide all, select this guy, hide selection. So with this guy, now I need to just you know make sure that it kind of fits. Hit one on the keyboard, select all this. So let's just move it in place for to, for starters. Let's move it in place for starters. You guys are starting to see, you know, okay, it's going to start coming together and let's hit it one. Just throw a symmetry modifier on this guy. So here are the, you know, the makings of our uh, of our arrow piece, and we'll finish detailing the guy out next uh, next class. Let's uh, let's isolate what we've created so far, so you guys can get a better view. Alt Q to isolate. Alt Q. So like I said, next class, uh, you know, we'll finish this guy out and uh, hopefully wrap this uh, this part of the project up. So this is kind of like a little side quest. I didn't intend to do this, but uh, you know, I think you guys can learn some valuable some valuable modeling uh, techniques just doing some of these. So. Okay, well, if you guys don't have any questions for ya boy, you guys are free to go.